guys, welcome back to another Edit Together Tuesdays where I share weekly editing tutorials and tips to help you amp your craft. If you enjoy videos like these, be sure to subscribe to stay in the loop for future videos in the series. And with that said, let's go ahead and dig right into Lightroom. First, let's chat about the differences between the clarity and the texture tools in Lightroom because to understand when it's best to use each of these, it's really helpful to know what they're doing to our images. And then towards the end of this tutorial, I have a really cool hack to share that will majorly speed up your Lightroom retouching workflow, especially if you're a portrait or wedding photographer uh, where you're working on large volumes of images. So I'll share that towards the end. First, let's go ahead and apply our basic edit to this image. Uh, these are just the basic edits I do across all my images. If you want to see a more in-depth tutorial on this, I'll link a couple below. And then we're going to go ahead and look at Clarity. And Clarity has been around a long time, so it's probably the one that most people are familiar with. The way that the Clarity tool works is by increasing contrast in your image, mostly in the midtones. So if you were to look at the histogram up in the right, while I move the Clarity slider, you'll see that essentially what it does is stretch out our histogram, making the black point lower and brightening the whites. So if I move that back, you'll see our histogram normalizes again. So it's dragging down the shadows and bringing more of the whites up when we increase the clarity. And because of this, it's also impacting the saturation of the skin tones because contrast impacts saturation. So this results in a bit of a punchy, crunchy look in portraits, uh, which <laughs> I think it creates kind of a zombie look. So not typically what we're going for for flattering skin tones. Uh, the one thing that clarity used to be really great for is if we reverse clarity the opposite direction, uh, it has the opposite effect, lowering contrast. But again, it's not ideal because of the impact it has on the color of the skin by increasing that saturation and actually altering the skin color. And also it's just a more extreme look. Of course, we're not going to be using it globally across our image like that uh, and are going to more like brush it on or selectively apply it to parts of the skin. But even then it creates this almost like when you would go to the mall for like glam portraits, <laughs> that very glowy kind of skin look that's just not natural looking. So more recently Adobe added the texture slider and this is pretty much replaced uh, what I used to do with the clarity tool in Lightroom. And that's because while clarity impacts the midtones, the texture only impacts the edge detail. So if we were to zoom in here a little bit more and play with this tool and drag it up, what you'll see is it allows us to either sharpen um, with a very natural look or what we're gonna be using it for is to soften and reduce the skin texture without actually changing the color or contrast of the skin in our image. And this creates a much more natural look when editing portraits of people. Now, of course, I don't recommend applying this across a full image. It's best for selective image retouching. So we'll take this off and then come up into our adjustment brush tool and come down to, we'll go ahead and bring the texture down to negative 100% uh, because I like to generally go more extreme so we can really see what we're doing. And then for our settings, Feather controls the edge softness of your brush. And I generally like to keep that at about 50 to start, which gives us a nice soft edge without it spilling onto other details as we're painting. Because if you have too soft of a brush, you get a lot of spillover. If it's not soft enough, then you uh, might have a really hard edge. So I find 50 is a really good place to start. And then for flow, I generally like to start around 40 to 60%. This is our opacity of our brush. And you can very easily dial this up or down just using the number keys. So I'll press six to go to 60, four to go to 40, and kind of start from there. So now we can just go ahead and begin painting on our image. And one thing I like to do is press keyboard shortcut O, which brings up a mask. So you can really see where you're painting. And I just like to avoid any sort of edge detail. Um, one thing that I notice is many people will get like the edge of the nose and uh, eyebrows and stuff like that. And those are things that we want to avoid because we don't want to 
get rid of the detail in our model's face. That's when things become very overprocessed looking, unnatural looking. We're just looking to soften things out a little bit, but with it still looking natural. So we'll go ahead and press O to unmask. And then after we have our general texture applied, we can go ahead and lower it down. And I usually go very subtle with these kind of tools. Um, I'll probably dial it up just a bit higher so that you can see it with the compression of the video. Uh, but probably around like 30 would be what I would typically do for an image like this. She doesn't have very, very bad skin, but you can see if I were to delete it off and back on again, that it just softens out those fine lines in the forehead and also masks some of the littler blemishes. And then the last tip I wanted to share is if we were to go ahead and delete this brush off, you can do essentially the same thing, but using your adjustment brushes. So either a radial adjustment brush, or I like to do it with a gradient adjustment brush. And if we were to just come to the outside of our image, what happens is the adjustment brush gets applied across our entire image here. And then the texture down to negative 100, you can see it's applied. And then what we'll do is come down to our range mask and turn this to color. And then we're gonna come to this little color picker here and get a sampling of the skin. Uh, you could either select different points on the skin, holding down shift to select the different colors within the skin tones and make sure you get like the highlights and also the shadows and the mids. Uh, but I generally like to do if you just click and drag, you can select a larger area of the skin. Actually, it might be better to do it right around this cheek where we have a bit of that highlight in the shadow. And that's gonna give us our color mask. And then we can come down here, hold down option, and adjust our mask. So the white is all of the areas that will be impacted by our texture tool. And so we can just slide it up where we're not getting any of the, any of the areas that we don't want, such as the eyes. And what's great about doing it this way, as opposed to the brush tool, is now this can be applied across multiple images. So say I had many images in a set and I wanted to apply this brush, I could copy the settings and you want to, if you have everything checked, you wanna go check none, local adjustment brush. I just have that gradient filter I'm gonna copy. And I can copy it over to multiple images, any other images that I want that apply to. And then the only thing that you have to do is come right down to this range mask tool, come to our selector again, and just make sure that it is on the area of skin you want. And then that's it. You can do a quick confidence check if you wanna make sure that it's hitting the right areas of the image. And then say like, it's mostly good, but I don't like that it's getting some of her lips. And it's also picking up the color of the flowers. And I want those clap flowers to stay super sharp. I don't want them to be um, reduced texture. Another thing that you can do is either come up to the brush area or keyboard shortcut shift T, which will reveal the brush tool. And this is cool because we are on that graduated filter still, but are able to then come in and erase areas and it's hard to see it so what I generally recommend doing is bringing up the temperature or the exposure you could do as well and this just allows you to see the part of the image that that is being applied to and I can just go ahead and paint it off of those lips Paint it off of the flowers. Bring that back down. And then we're good. So go ahead and bring that down. We can go before and after. And there you have it. Really quick way of speeding up your editing workflow while also getting those 
creamy, soft, beautiful skin tones that we and our clients love. So that's my quick hack for this Edit Together Tuesday. If you enjoyed it, drop a comment below. Let me know. I love hearing from you. And also be sure to subscribe for more videos in this editing series every Tuesday. And check out these other videos here. And I will see you next time.